Hey, it's a very different video. Uh, we're taking a look at season 12 of Doctor Who. Um, now, some of you may know this, but this is my favourite season of all time. Uh, I just think there isn't a bad story in it. It's not a story where I look at it and I go, I do, I don't really want to watch that. Like, yes, season 7 is probably one of the greatest, but some of like Inferno and Ambassadors of Death, I look at them and I go, there are times where I'm like, I don't want to watch it. Where with season 12, there's not a time with any episode where I'm like, I don't want to watch it. Which is hard for a season to do. Um, some would argue there are duds like Revenge of the Cybermen. Um, and some people don't really like the Sometime Experiment. But in my opinion, those are two of the best in the actual season. Uh, so in these videos, we're going to go through merchandise. Um, sort of how they were uh, accepted. Uh, original releases of that, you know, basically there's going to be a wealth of knowledge on each one. And I thought I'd start with season 12 because I've got a lot of season 12 memorabilia. Uh, this only counts stuff that is directed directly to a season 12 story. So, for example, this is from a collector set, you know, this Tom Baker. That Tom Baker is based on season 12 and season 12 only. But I'm not going to get a sonic screwdriver from Tom Baker's era because that's from any season, if you get how this is going to work. I also go, will go through annuals. I have both. Uh, annuals that I'll need for this. One is a printout, but hey. And uh, yeah, and there'll always be something in the background. I know those should be the other way around, it's just the internet, I can't help that. So we'll start by t uh, reviewing each story. So Robot is the first Tom Baker story, and it's a pretty good introduction. Um, the, unlike in others, the to uh, Tom Baker isn't really going through any uh, regeneration stress. Which I think adds to the story because, uh, you know, like something in Spearhead, yes, it is the greatest story of all time. There are times where you think, yeah, can the Doctor just, like, you know, get up now? Because it's boring watching the Doctor be in bed, not quite know who he is. Whereas Tom Baker just gets up and he's like, yeah, um, give, it, give us a min. And then he comes back and out of his costume, and it's amazing. And then you've got some really good um, sort of investigation stuff with Sarah Jane and the people who make the robot, the think tank uh, people. And it's all in all just a really cool story. Uh, Ian Martyr's brilliant playing the... Um, I can't remember what exactly he played, but he like goes undercover in that. Uh, the the guy, the robot is very good in all um, the K one. Uh, there are some great scenes with him and Sarah Jane, and I think he's just Terence sticks with what he had and what he had to do. Really did excel himself at this uh, with this one, and it is a, the last hurrah for the Barry Letts in Terence sticks era. My personal favourite era second is Hit Philip Pinchcliffe, and that's another point we're going to go on to uh, Philip Pinchcliffe. Um, most people will argue season 13 and 14 are the greatest, some of the greatest seasons of Doctor Who. And it's true they are, but I think season 12 beats them for me. I think because, for example, I am not a fan of Planet of Evil. I'm not really a fan of Brain and Morbius. Uh, so there you go, that's two in season 13. That, and Terror of the Zygons, that's three in season 13 I won't want to watch. Season 14, I'm not a fan of Face of Evil. Uh, I find Talon's a bit boring. I like robots. Um... I don't like Mask of Mandragora, and I'm not a fan of The Hand of Fear, so I almost hate season 14. So, this is why I prefer season 12 over those two. Uh, the next story, my one of my second favourite Doctor Who story of all time, The Ark in Space. I don't know whether it's the pacing, or the ideas, or the acting, but something about the story grips me every time I watch it. And I can't, I have to sit down and watch the whole thing. And I'm so annoyed I only have the original edition. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Wirren are a bit dated now. Uh, I mean, especially the when they get turned into the Wirren. Uh, but, you know, back then, Bubble Wrap was this new, crazy, exciting in invention that blew people's minds. And now it's just something kids like to play with and uh, kind of massacre, really. Um, but apart from that, I think it's, you know, an amazing story. Um... The person who was going to write this, John Lorisotti, I believe his name is, uh, well, that's not how you pronounce it, I know, but um, his ideology for what it was going to be would have made it shit, if I'm honest, to put it bluntly. Uh, Robert Holmes did a really good job of uh, sort of patching this one up. Uh, the next story, uh, my favourite season 12 story, um, even though I prefer Ark in Space, it has to be my favourite because it was one of my first classics. It is the Sontaran Experiment. Now, if you don't know the story with this, I'm going to go through it now. Uh, so, close to me is a library. I'd go all the time as a kid, as most kids do. They'd always go to a library. You never actually read any of the books. 
and um, this li my library I noticed had DVDs. And at this point, I had uh, I knew what classic Doctor Who was. I uh, got Spear from Space on DVD, and just you know kind of preferred it over the new series. But you know, when I was like five at this point, and I saw that was uh, there was two that caught my eye: Resurrection of the Daleks and the Sontaran Experiment. And I thought I'll go with Sontaran first because uh, they would just come back, I think, at this point. So um, I really wanted to see what they used to be. And my dad was like, oh, you know, it's going to be, it could be, it could be up to six parts. And I'm like, no. And this was a two part, and that kind of, you know, that took me, took us back. So I could watch the whole thing in one go. And I, I don't know whether it was the aesthetics of the show or the pace, well, not really the pacing, but I don't know what grabbed me about it, but for a long time it was my favourite story. But then, you know, spearheading that. You know, there were like three or four stories which I just can't decide on. But yeah, I think uh, Sontaran Experiment is a really good introduction and um, um, introduction reintroduction to the Sontarans, I guess, because at that point, after Lynx is dead, that could easily have do that could have been it for the Sontarans, uh, because there are them one-off monsters like uh, Sutek or uh, Magnus Greel, or what other good one-off monsters are there? I would say Omega, but he did return in Arkham Infinity, but it's not the same character really. Let's be honest. Um, you know, there are those characters that, yeah, and Davros was going to be a one-off and all, which we'll get onto that now. Uh, so Genesis of the Daleks. Most people say this is the best in season 12. It's the most overrated Doctor Who story, in my opinion. Yes, it's good. But, I think, it's probably second to worst if I had to rank um, these stories in season 12, which I know will shock a lot of people. I say Robots of the Week is mainly because it's not Philip Pinchcliffe, so the rest of the stories just seem that one bit better because it's this. It was a bit rushed, robot. I guess. I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I, Genesis is amazing. Still, like I said, this is my favorite season, so I don't think they're bad. But I just think because so many people say it's so good, and people forget about things like Sontaran Experiment and Revenge of the Cybermen, two of my favorite stories, that I kind of hate it for that reason. If that makes sense. But then again, you're a brilliant story. Um, I don't think it's too long. Uh, I fly through the first three episodes before you know I'm on episode five. I'm like, oh, I've got one more to go. Almost done. My only problem with it, and it's not that there should be more Daleks. I understand why there was hardly any Daleks, and it makes sense there was hardly any Daleks. My only problem with it is the sort of the whole sort of one thing happens, then it happens again with different people. Then they meet, then they do something, and then they do something, and then that thing happens again. If you kind of get what I mean. Kind of feels like it repeats itself, but uh, trying to deceive you as if it's not. Because, as you know, you see the, um, them loading the rocket a few times. Um, and you see them do it again, but then you see uh, some other characters come into it and stop them from being loading the rocket. But you see, um, I think with this with it being written by Terry Nation, at this point he's written a lot of Dalek stories. A lot of Dalek stories. And he adds, um, and you know, I think Planet of the Daleks is an amazing story. And the best Alex story of all time. So I think when he came to Genesis and, re and making Davros, he had to sort of make it epic, but he's going to have to do some more than just show Davros. Because if I'm honest, Genesis, I mean, Michael Wisher is the second best Davros. I personally, I think Terry Malloy is the best Davros. Um, but I don't know what it is about Genesis, but it's like, I watch it, yeah, that was amazing. And then I rewatch it, you know, think about it in your head like a couple of days later and I go, wasn't amazing though. But it's still, you know, one of the greats. And then we move on to the most underrated Sideman story of all time. And that is Revenge of the Sidemen. Some people say this one's a bit crap. Uh I personally love Revenge of the Sidemen. Maybe because as a child it was one of there were if you don't know the original Doctor Who site had something called the Classic Hero. Basically, that's why I lived 24-7 for a bit. And there'd be clips of some episodes and some not. And there was, there'd be some episodes like The Invasion of Time, uh, Revenge of the Sad Men, and I think uh, on The Sea Devils, that there was no clips. But they looked so interesting and so entertaining and so gripping that I just needed to see them. I was doing, I was, I was looking at photos and that. And there were other times there were clips, for example, The Invasion. The reason I got that is because I'd seen so many clips online. And that kind of, that if it weren't for that website, I probably wouldn't have been a, cl a classic Doctor Who fan for this long. And Revenge of the Sidemen was one of those where it was just a photo of the Doctor and the Sidemen. And I just, 
I don't know what it was about it, but I just wanted to see it. Maybe because the side men were in it. Maybe because I liked the fourth doctor. I don't know. But it just gripped me. And when I uh, did come to see it, it didn't disappoint me at all. Uh, I think it is a good rate, great story. Now, um, if you don't know, there's a bit of a story arc in season 12. And now this story arc is probably the best story arc, I'd say. It's not all up in your face. Uh, it's not in robot. It starts in the arc in space. They go to a place called Space Station Nerva. And at the end of it, they have to go down to Earth, where the central experiment is set. And they talk about Space Station Nerva. And then they have to beam back up to it because they fixed what they went down there to do. But the Time Lords grab them and take them to Scar Scaro. That's where Genesis of the Daleks happens. Then they use the Time Ring to go back. And that Time Ring sends them back to Space Station Nerva, but in a more recent time before are the arc in space. So that's where Revenge of the Cybermen happens. And then they leave. So it is a bit of a story arc that are all linked together, which I, you know, I didn't notice it actually. Funny thing, I didn't notice it until I did my marathon. Because uh, I think, um, I don't know why I didn't notice it, but yeah, but when I did, I thought, oh my god, that's genius and that is amazing. It's better than the key, because it's not all up in your face. Like, be uh, the beginning of the episode and the end of the episode will mention it, and then that's it. And then you have a story in between, and in this case, a brilliant story in between. And it really does help to, in, it, it makes you want to watch the next one in it. So when I put the Ark in Space on, I wasn't planning on doing a marathon. But I went, I, went, I kind of watched this sort of, sort of experiment, and then I thought, wait, does Genesis, like, and then it does. I want to watch the version of Simon, did. And there you go. And then I did a bit of a Tom Baker marathon, but stopped now because, yeah, I get, I'm getting to the bits where I hate. Anyway, merchandise then. Merchandise. Well, character options have, except for the Arkham Space, a uh, at least two figures from every story. Genesis of the Daleks, I don't have any. You may think I do. That is a planet Dalek, just to make it look good. There is a collector set with Davros, two Daleks, and um, Tom Baker. That's Tom Baker. There is a sound effects Dalek. There is. Uh, there was one released with the original Dalek collector set. There is this one where they um, missing a gun and a Tom Baker. And I believe that is it. I don't think there were any more released. Um, yeah, some time experiment and has the Sontag Experiment set, that's it. Revenge of the Cybermen has the same, just the three Cybermen figures. Uh, robot has the Robot and the Fourth Doctor. And I think I've gone through them all there. Uh, yep, those are merchandise. Biff Bang Pow did release uh, a Cyber Controller and a Sontaran. And I think, and the Fourth Doctor was Season 12 as well, I believe in that, and I think that was it for them. Uh, if Dennis Fisher uh, released uh, two season 12 uh yeah two uh they released the k1 robot uh well or giant robot and a cyberman and i think that's it for toys and uh, there was a few models of a few figures um i think a harry and a sarah released i think there was a, there was a harry from santa experiment released by harlequin miniatures i think that's the name they did a lot of doctor Who miniatures of early in late 90s early 2000s and yeah, and of course, as you can see, the complete history. Uh, there are two um, novels, novel, books, issues with them in. Uh, issue 22 has uh, the first three stories, and issue 23 has the last two stories and Terror of the Zygons. Uh, the annuals, the annuals for this. Well, in 1975, the technically the year, although it did start in 1974, the 1975 annual, I have here, it uh, was Pertwee based. And there was no Tom Baker in it because when this came out, this would have been 1974. Uh, and this would have been made in probably mid-1974 before Tom Baker was announced because he is announced in around November time. So, yeah, he's John Pertwee. The next issue, uh, annual from, which would be in, released in 1975, like an annual is, is the first Tom Baker annual, 1976. Uh, I think that is from the season 12 promotion shoot. And yeah, and as soon as you open it up, it's got season 12 Tom Baker right there. And yeah, uh, I was given this a long, uh, when I was a kid, my dad printed it out at work, at, work, uh, at his work, I should say, sorry. And uh, yeah, I've never properly read it. It's a nice thing to have, I guess. I think it must have been from one of my DVDs, maybe, that I had. And he, he maybe printed it out. I'm just thinking there. I, I should not think of it, that's probably how we, yeah. Yeah, I've just been not. Uh, I've just realised that. Anyway, those are the annuals. Uh, DVD releases. We'll go over those. 
Uh, all but the Ark in Space uh, were really, have just been released singly. Uh, one, is, uh, uh, one is exclusive to a box set. Revenge of the Cybermen, Silver Nemesis. That's the box set, and that's what Revenge comes in. Genesis was in Sontaran, I released in 2006. Uh, within the same sort of time period. Robot is released in 2007. Uh, the Ark in Space Original Edition is released in 2002. And the Special Edition is released in 2013. Uh, I also have, one moment, a cover for the Ark in Space VHS. Not the VHS itself. When I brought the Ark in Space uh, Original Edition, second hand, uh, this was inside of it. So I got an old VHS box with a Rugrats video in. And I just put it in there, and yeah, it's a nice little display item. Uh, the artwork isn't the best, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, I think it's just a nice thing. All the, the inside of it has promotions. We've got things like the Time Warrior, Spear from Space, Day of the Daleks. Um, just yeah, some really cool stuff. I'd love to collect the v uh, VHSs actually. Uh, I just think they look so cool. And I, I wouldn't have them in story order, I'm having, I'd have them in release order because in story order they would look a bit messy. But yeah, so that is the season 12 of merchandise. All in all, it is the greatest season of Doctor Who, in my opinion. I know I'm, not many people would agree with me on that. Some would say season 13, some would say some new series, and hey, everyone's got their own opinion. But if you are like me and you think, well, if you at least think this is one of the a very underrated season, do say because I, I think. I think, with the exception of Genesis of the Daleks and the Ark in Space, the other three are quite overlooked. No one really mentions Revenge of the Simon when we're talking about Simon stories. Even though it is the return of them after a quite long hiatus, bar a cameo in Carnival Monsters. And Suntown Experiment's kind of just seen as that one that went after the Time Warrior. And then Robots just remembered as Tom Baker's first story. That's pretty much it. It, you know, not they're not remembered for being great stories, they're just remembered for certain things. Uh, and all that noise. But, I just think it's one of the greatest season, the, sorry, the greatest season of all time. Uh, so yeah, um, this has been my sort of season overview of season 12. I'd love to do more of these, um, they're quite fun to do. Uh, oh my god, who is it? I can't see. Um, yeah, I'll turn my Xbox off for just a second. Uh, if you would love to see more of these, do just say do say which seasons as well. Uh, I do have every story, par the arc, which I'm going to try and track down with my local HMV. Uh, the disc has been popped out of it, and it's probably going to be very scratched, so I'm not going to buy that, so I'm going to have to wait for them to restock. Uh, but, yeah, apart from that, so which is that's season three, I could do it on any other one, because I have everything else. So, yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, if you did, please hit that like button as it would help very, very much. And also subscribe for daily Doctor Who videos. So the ones in the video, was it Friday? Yeah, Friday. That was because it was meant to be Saturday's video, but I put it on private to put the thumbnail on. I put on, uh, I put it to public. It didn't let me put the thumbnail on. Didn't even upload it. So I thought, crap. So I had to re-upload the video, and the thumbnail should be on by the time you can watch this video. But yeah. Sorry about that, um, I couldn't help it, I didn't, and I thought, well, I might as well use that for today's video, but yeah. 